Hi, I'm Mark Weitzman. Welcome back to Quantum Field Theory, a student's perspective. Um, today on this video, I'd like to do um, the recitation for lesson one and um, just a single problem from Cernecki's book. So we're going to do our recitation. Problem 1.3 on page 14 of Sudnecki's book. <clears throat> QFT. So the problem is actually very simple. It says show show that n comma h so that n comma h is equal to zero in other words the number operator commutes with the Hamiltonian where by definition which is given in the book h is equal to the integral we sandwich our We sandwich our um, single particle Hamiltonian non relativistic in between um, annihilation and creation operators. That's one part of the Hamiltonian. And then the other part is a um, you know what? Um, I'll put this on the next line. The other part is a uh, interaction um, Hamiltonian. Just very general. U is a single particle potential. V is a um, interparticle potential when making no assumptions whatsoever about them. So this is very similar to many body theory if you're familiar with it when you have these like strings of creation and annihilation operators. So that's what H is. And um, N, the number operator, is a little simpler. So that's our usual number operator. So in all these problems, since I don't have boldface here, you know, x, y, z are, um, are 3D vectors. So I should really write them as x, y, z, but I'm not going to bother because it plays no role whatsoever in this. Okay. So... Let's start by just remembering the uh, commutation relations and these are the same as the general ones for harmonic oscillators it's equation 131 in Sugnecki's book and again all of these are vectors So these are the uh, canonical commutation relations. And the only non-zero one is between A and A dagger. And that's just the uh, delta function, three-dimensional delta function. OK. So um, let's calculate the first term. So here we have, this is the first term, and I'm going to call this the second term. So rather than doing them both at once and screwing up and 
you know, try and simplify things. Let's just do the first term first. If we're lucky, uh, it will be zero by itself, which is what I expect. And then um, at least we'll be on, on our way. So, so this is the integral of d3x. Well, that didn't work. Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. The integral d3x a dagger x ax. This is the end part. And um, then we're going to do the first part. So remember, you have to use different variables. We can't call everything x. a dagger y. I have minus h bar squared over 2m. I'm going to put a y, a subscript y on the delta function to make it clear that we're taking the nabla squared or del squared with respect to y. Just want to make sure I didn't. Yeah. Okay, plus u of y, a y. So. Maybe I shouldn't um, use brackets since we're using commutators for brackets. I'll use parentheses. Now, this operator over here is not going to play much of a role in the calculation at all. As a matter of fact, you could totally ignore it and you'll get the correct results. But I'm going to just call it, I'm going to define and call it D of Y as a differential operator. And the rest of the derivation. So if we're using another variable, it might be DX or whatever. I'm, I'm doing this painfully slowly, and I'm doing it as rigorously as I can. So you'll see several places where we use uh, integration by parts twice. That's the only thing you need to know about this dy operator, is that I can integrate by parts twice. The first time on the derivative operator will change sign. The second time it will change sign again. So applying this to the left leads to no change in the operator. And that's, um, that will prove to be useful. So going back to over here, this is going to be equal to, we can bring um, the integrals outside the commutators. This is where I'm not being rigorous about changing orders for uh, sums and products and various things like that. And we have the commutator a dagger x, ax, a dagger y, dy, ay. And this is equal to, and everything we're doing is we're going to be using the basic, I think this is sometimes called Leibniz rule or product rule for commutators. A, B, comma, C is equal to A, B, comma, C plus so that's another boxed equation and on the other side it's a similar thing so we're just going to be using that the whole problem we're going to be using this over and over again okay so this is equal to the integral d3x, d3y. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that thing on this term over here. So I'm going to get a dagger x, commutator of ax, comma, plus 
plus the commutator of, let's see, I took a dagger x out. Now I get ax, comma, uh, okay, a dagger x, ax with that. Let me start this term over again. Um, This is outside over there. Let me make that clear. Okay. So we've just expanded based on that, and now I'm going to do the other side as well. So this is equal to, we're going to get four terms now. Now I'm going to expand on this thing. So the a dagger x is all the way to the left. And now I take this, I'm basically thinking of this as two things, that and that. Those would be like my a and b, but they're on the other side there a dagger x, a dagger y, commutator of ax, dy, ay, plus a dagger x, commutator, ax. Now I leave the a dagger y there, and I take out dy, ay. So that gives me these two terms. Now I work on this term over here. So I'm going to bring the a dagger y out, commutator a dagger x, and it had an ax all the way on the right. And finally, our last term is going to be the commutator a dagger x, a dagger y, dy, ay, ax. Now we know that this is zero, so let's just cross this term out. That disappears. So now we have three terms here. So we have the integral of d3x d3y. Now, a dagger x, a dagger y. Now, dy is a, a differential operator. It has no effect on x because, I mean on ax, because a depend, there's no x variable in dy. It's a differential operator with respect to y. So we can bring it outside of the commutator. So I get dy commutator ax comma ay. Okay, well that's great because we know this commutator is zero. So this term vanishes. Okay. I move on to this term plus a dagger x. We know the commutator of ax and a dagger y is del 3x minus y. d 
dy ay. And then we'll, let's move on to our final term, plus a dagger y. Now again, dy has no effect on x, so I can bring that out, dy. And then I'm left with a dagger x and a y, which is minus del 3 x minus y. The minus sign is multiplicative, not additive there. And then I have ax. Okay, very good. So now we just have to evaluate the delta functions. And when evaluating a delta function, we simply set this to 0 or y equal to x or x equal y. So this is equal to the integral of d3y, a dagger x, okay, d3x, um, a dagger x, dx ax, so we set x equal to y, um, and then I have this one last term, and again I'm going to set y equal to x minus a dagger x, okay, um, So, this dy is operating on this delta function, and we don't like, uh, in general, let's try not to take derivatives of delta functions. So let's try not to take derivatives of delta functions, but here's where we can use the integration by parts, because X is no, X isn't even involved in this thing over here, so I can move the dy onto a dagger y. So I can make that dy apply to a dagger y, and then I have del 3 x minus y ax, okay? And now, the whole thing is equal to the integral d3x, a dagger x, dx, ax, minus d. Now, when we do the delta function integral, we set y equal x. So I have minus d parentheses x, a dagger x, ax. And again, this thing is operating on that, and now I'm going to use one final integration by parts to get it on the other operator. So, in a sense, this seems like a lot of meaningless back and forth, but technically this is what we should be doing. And now we get on I0, because these terms are identical. So that does the, um, the first term, and like I said, I, I'm sort of proceeding in a painfully obvious and slow way. Um, you can usually do these things by just ignoring everything but the annihilation and creation operators. Probably 99 times out of 100 it will be fine, maybe one time it won't, so. So our second term is a little bit more involved, not too much more involved, d3x, a dagger x, ax, that's our n, and then we have the second part of the Hamiltonian, and once again we got to change variables, here I'll go to y and z. V comes out because that's just a number. 
Vy minus C. Notice we're not making any assumptions about whether this is the absolute value or it's symmetric or anything. It's just V of Y minus C. We don't have to. Okay, then we have A dagger Y, A dagger Z, A Z, A Y. Okay, so this is equal to one half. Now we have a triple integral. V Y minus C commutator A dagger X A X A dagger Y A dagger Z A Z and A Y Okay Now let's just work on here one half I guess it only works when I do it right away now I'll start by working on this term over here. So we'll have A dagger X commutator AX A dagger Y A dagger Z AZ AY. Now, I know that you can solve this problem in general by thinking about even and odd numbers of creation and annihilation operators and you know certainly if I had six or eight or if I wanted a general thing I could do it but I'm just doing it the straightforward way here simply because um, you know it's chapter one and, and you may not have seen these things before so um, I'm gonna put a bracket here Now I get the other term from here. I took out the A dagger X. Now I leave it in there. This is dagger, not transpose. And, you know, it's just a lot of, you just keep plugging and chugging. There's no, no creativity in this problem at all. But like a lot of things in the beginning of quantum field theory, especially when we get to scalar fields next week, a lot of things involve just long plug and chugs, and then you find that the Hamiltonian ends up being very simple, like A dagger A. And the energy ends up being very simple. Well, that is the Hamiltonian, but the number operator and various things. So a lot of things, when you go from classical to quantum, you just have to plug and chug, and then you find out that you have a very simple expression. But sometimes you'll get things like um, zero-point energies or divergences and some other stuff. So it's useful to go through these exercises, and it's useful to go through the uh, derivations in the book even if the end result is going to be very simple. So here I have um, now I have a dagger x. So I'm working on this term over here. And now I'm going to start expanding with these. So a dagger x A dagger Y commutator and then I have next term B 
Here I don't take anything out in front, I take it out in the back. The hard for, part for me to, when I do this is when I go to my notes, I can never find my place. It's easier for me to just look at what I'm doing on the paper. A dagger Y I took out in front, so now I'm going to leave the A dagger Y in there. And I'm going to take, so what I did was I divided this into these three operators and these three, and that one operator. So I took A dagger Y out, AX, and now I'm going to have. I'm going to leave it in there and take out the operator. Okay. So that gives me these two terms. And now I'm going to work over here. I have a dagger X. Um, oh. <sighs> yeah, I'm going to take out the I'm working down here, so I'm taking out the A dagger Y commutative A dagger X now uh, our fourth term uh, Dagger X, A dagger Y, AX. I take out these three terms in front. A dagger Z. Oh. Okay, I did that wrong again. This should go in the back here. So these two terms came from here, and these two terms come from here. Okay. Continuing to plug and chug. Now I have Um, a dagger X, a dagger Y, and now I'm going to have this, um, these two things, I'm going to split it like this, and I'm going to get, well, I'm going to do this uh, real quickly, actually. Um, so what I'm going to get is, when I put the A dagger Z out in front, I'm only ha I'm only left with A operators, so that vanishes. So, um, and then the other part is I put this outside, these two outside here, then I'm left with AX, A dagger Z, which is just del 3X minus Z. So I'm doing a step in my head here, but we gotta speed this along. Okay, so that gives me that term. Then the next term I have is A dagger X. I know that 
This commutator evaluates quickly to del 3x minus y, a dagger z, a z, a y. Now I go to over here, this term. Again, when I take the a dagger z out to the left, I'm, well, no, that I have to do. Okay. So here I'm going to get plus, I'll be a little slow here, a dagger y, a dagger z, times the commutator, a dagger x, a z, a y, times a x, that comes from here, the first terms, plus a dagger y. So now I'm going to leave the, okay, when I leave the a dagger z in there and, and bring this out, then I just have both daggers, so that vanishes. So I don't need to write down the other term. So this term over here, I don't even remember what that was even. Um, well, I'll worry about it in a second. Wait a minute. I think it was... Um, okay, it was A dagger X. A dagger y, a dagger z, a z, a y, a x. Okay. So this this term vanishes right away, actually. Okay. Now, before I get totally confused, I did a dagger y, a dagger z, and then I have a dagger x, a z, a y. Then the other thing I do is... Um, so I took the a dagger z out, and now I'll get a dagger x and a dagger z, which is zero, so I don't have to do anything anymore. So I'm just left with these three terms. I hope, somehow I think I need four terms here. Okay, I have two terms there. Okay, so let's start evaluating some of these things. One half. First term, we have a delta function, so I'm going to set z equal to x, d3x, d3y, v, x minus y. Okay, so that a dagger x, a dagger y, a x, a, y. These can be written in either order, and same thing with these because they're both the same type of operators. Okay, so that's that term. And now here I have a del 3x minus y. So I have one half, so now we're going to integrate over y. I'm going to have d3x, d3z, I'm going to set y equal to x. So I have a dagger x, a dagger z, a z, a x. Okay. Now I've got this term, this final term over here. So I want to do this, one half the integral, d3x, d3y, d3z, v, y minus z. Okay, I left out the, uh, there's also a v, y minus z. 
well, we set y equal to x as x minus z. Okay. So I have one half the integral d3x, d3y, d3z, by minus z, a dagger y, a dagger z. And now here I'm going to get az, I'm going to take out in front, az. Then I'm going to get a minus delta function, minus del 3x minus y. And then I'm going to get plus, now I took the az out in front, now I'm going to take the ay out and back. I'm going to get a minus del 3x minus z. Okay, so we're left with one half the integral d3x, d3y, vx minus y, a dagger x, a dagger y, a y, a x. I just switched the order of the terms there. Now I'm going to switch the variable z to y just to make everything easy to cancel. d3y v x minus y a dagger x, a dagger y, a y, a x. Now I have these two terms to evaluate. They're going to both have a negative sign. So the first one I have a y minus z. I'm sorry, the first one I have a delta 3x minus y. So I'm going to integrate over y and um, I'll be left with d3x, d3z, v, I set y equal to x, x minus z, a dagger x, a dagger z, a z. Oh, I left that one over there. that one over there, az, ax, then I have minus one-half the integral. Here I have a delta x minus z, so I'm going to do the integral over z and set z equal to x. Vy minus x. A dagger y, a dagger x, a x, a y. I'm switching the orders there. Okay, so let's see if these cancel. Um, it's pretty clear if we put z equal y that these two terms cancel. Okay, now here it's, it's a little less obvious um, because we have x minus y and we have y minus x. Um, 
So let's rewrite this term as minus one half the integral. Just uh, switch x and y as the variables. I'm just making a variable name change. Now I have a dagger x, a dagger y, a y, and a x. And now we can see that these two terms are exactly the same. So these two cancel. So this is equal to 0. And the sum of 0 plus 0 equals 0. So um, that's our answer. Um, as I said, there was nothing deep in this problem or anything. It's just plugging and chugging. But it's useful to get some um, experience doing these things. And um, there'll be some more problems in um, Chapter 3 where Sugneki will walk you through the chapter and do the problem for you. But in some of the exercises, you're going to also have to do some fairly long calculations with a lot of cancellations. And you usually end up with fairly simple results. So thank you very much, and um, on the next video that I'm going to release, I'm going to finish the update to um, Lesson 0, 1, and 2 by redoing the uh, videos on the um, Galen invariance of the Schrodinger equation. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.